Hey, this is Pastor Jason, and welcome to our 1030 online worship experience. If you're joining us from Facebook, what we would love for you to do is jump on over to our church online experience. It's a little bit less distracting, and it's a better overall experience. If you're brand new with us, what we would love to do is get to know you. And the way that we do that is through a connect card. If you follow the link in chat, you can fill that out and we'll be in touch with you. Are you ready for our 1030 service? Grab a seat and let's get going.
Father God, we just lift you up right now. You said if we would humble ourselves, so we do humble ourselves. True humility is admitting that we need you, that we need to rely on you. Lord, you said if we would repent from our evil ways, that we would turn from our sin. And so we do that. We turn back to you in your ways. Lord, we don't need to have it our way. You said if that we would do those things, that you would hear our cry, that you would hear our prayer, that you would heal our sins, that you would heal our land. So we come to you right now. Humble, repentant, turn to you. We thank you that you are bringing healing in our land, physical healing, emotional healing, mental healing, spiritual healing, financial healing. And in the name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Amen. Well, church, as you're joining with us, we would love to pray with you and your prayer needs. On the, your screen right now, you're going to see a number that you can text. You can text the word prayer to that number there on the screen. And we will be in agreement with prayer with you and send this out to our prayer partners, praying as a staff and joining together with you in agreement as the scriptures say let's continue with worship today
turn it for good. You turn it for good. Yeah, yeah. You take what the enemy did for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. Oh yeah. You take what the enemy did for evil, and you turn it. going to wrap up our worship to God with our giving of our tithe and our offering. There on your screen, uh, you're going to see the way that you can connect with us and give online uh, right now. Uh, and you can just follow those simple directions. And we just want to say thank you. Thank you for your continued uh, generosity in this moment. And uh, also, I just want to say thank you, church. Uh, this week, uh, we were made aware by a local principal of a need for students to have some meals and, and, and the lack of food that was available for them. And so we put out a call on social media. And uh, you guys just came through. Many of you uh, donated to that. Over two SUVs full of food were delivered to this principal who distributed it to many families this week. You made a difference. And if you would like to stay up to date on how you can connect with more of these serve opportunities that we have as a church, uh, you can text the word serve to the number there on your screen. You can just follow those directions. Text the word serve to the number there, and we're going to keep you up to date with what we are doing as a church to make a difference in our community. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And as we give right now, let's pray. Father God, in these uncertain times, we are certain of one thing. We can trust you. We can believe you. We are certain that you are dependable in these times where nothing may seem dependable. And so, Lord, as an act of worship, as an act of belief, as an act of faith, as an act of trust, we give right now. And we just thank you for this opportunity to reflect upon your faithfulness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, church, we are so excited that we get to join in with part one of a brand new series called Heroic Faith. 
No matter who you are, where you live, or what you do, we all face situations where we are not sure where to turn or what to do. It can be unsettling when everything around us, the government, the economy, even the medical and scientific communities, is shaken. The good news is that while our world can be shaken, our God is unshakable. Join us as we learn how to trust God and exercise heroic faith in uncertain times. Well, welcome everybody to Rise Church. So glad that you're joining with us on our digital church online experience. If you're a guest with us for the very first time, we are so honored that you are joining with us today at Church Online. Uh, whether you're a guest or you are part of our spiritual family, I want to invite you to the best church online experience, which is actually found uh, on our website at our church online home. You can actually find the link in the comments right below and uh, gives you the great greatest experience and the greatest digital experience that we offer for church online. Today we are starting a brand new series called Heroic Faith. And here's what I know about uh, the world we live in today. We're going to need some big kind of faith. We're going to need some heroic faith if we're going to get through some of the trials and issues that we're all coming against. We don't want to be fearful people. We want to be faithful people. And so if you have your Bibles, uh, we'd love for you to jump into Luke chapter 22. That's that's where we're going to start out today. Luke chapter 22. We'd love for you to pull it up on maybe your online Bible or maybe you have a Bible that you're sitting with right now in your home and follow along with us. You can also follow along inside of our YouVersion Bible app. We actually put our notes ahead of time. And so you can go into YouVersion, find the events tab and search Rise Church TX here in San Antonio and you'll find our notes for heroic faith today. Well, as you are going to Luke chapter 22, I want to give you some context of exactly where uh, we are at in in Luke chapter 22. Luke is a gospel that we know inside of the New Testament, and a gospel is really a life of Jesus. It's a story of Jesus's life, and we have four of them in the New Testament. It starts Matthew, Mark, Luke, and then John. We're going to be in that Luke's gospel, and in chapter 22, we're getting towards the end of Jesus's life. Jesus has uh, done all that he's done inside of ministry. He's done it in a three-year ministry span. He, he's around 33 years old, and he's getting towards the end of his ministry time, and the Bible says that he walks out and goes to a unique place called the Garden of Gethsemane. And this is the last moment and last place he was going to be with those closest to him, some of his disciples, before he would go and be tried, before he would be executed, before he would actually raise up from the dead. So this is the last moment of really his, what we call, earthly ministry. And in Luke chapter 22, it gives us some insight to God's, one of God's kind of more stressful pressure-filled moments uh, in his life. And so we'll Luke chapter 22, we'll read it together today. And it says, and he came out and went, this is in verse 39, as was his custom. So the Bible tells us that he does this not just once, but he does this several times. He had a moment, I like that God, that actually the Bible actually highlights that this was his custom, that he had multiple times where he went to the Garden of Gethsemane. He went to the Garden of, of Press, and so to the Mount of Olives, or we know as the Garden of Gethsemane, and the disciples followed followed with him. Verse 40 says, on reaching that place, he said to them, pray that you will not fail or fall into temptation. In Luke 41, chapter verse 41, it says, and he withdrew about a stone's throw beyond them, and he knelt down and prayed. Now, what some of us don't know is that uh, the Garden of Gethsemane or the Mount of Olives, this was a place uh, really literally translated press. It was a place during that culture where many people would actually, where they would create olive oil. And the only way you do that is you put, obviously, olives in an air and you press and you push them together and it creates the olive oil. So literally translated, this would be uh, the, the place of press or the place of pressure. It's not a coincidence that the Bible says that Jesus goes to one of his most stressful, pressure-filled moments in the place that's literally called stress or pressure. So if you have your notes today, with that as our backdrop, the title of our message today is Collective Faith. We're starting a series called Heroic Faith, and inside of that, the first message is going to be called Collective Faith. Will you pray with me wherever you are in the world? Father, we just love you, God. Lord, thank you that you're here with us today. Thank you that we can open up your scriptures no matter where we are inside of this world. Thank you for the technology that 
we have where we can reach hundreds and thousands of people all across the world right now with the message of the gospel. Lord, I know that we've prepared notes, but you, the truth is you have notes prepared for us in our hearts. And I pray that the Holy Spirit would now, no matter where we are, would go ahead and actually speak to us on behalf of your word today in Jesus name and all across uh, our digital platforms. Everybody said, amen. Um, I know for me, uh, it's easy for me to uh, kind of get my attention lost. It's easy for me to lose my attention. I, I have what's called ADDDDDD. I mean, a lot of my attention can get lost in translation. There's some things that happen. I can be in a conversation and I'll see something in a, the distance and I'll be kind of like, oh, squirrel, you know, or you get like have a moment where your, your attention is now taken off of what you're supposed to be doing or maybe what you are intending to do. One of the areas that happens to me often is when I go to the movies and uh, when, when, when uh, several months ago when my wife and my kids, we we went out to see a movie. We went out together, and I remember sitting inside of the center of the theater. It was an interesting thing. I sat in the center of the theater. I don't normally do that. I like to kind of be on the end so that I can get out if I need to get to uh, something easily. But we sat in the center of the theater. We sat maybe three quarters of the way up. We're in the middle of the movie. It's about halfway through the movie, and it's getting to the good part. I'm locked in. I'm zoned in. I'm like right in the middle of the story. And I remember in the deep, in the dark, what I looked over something happened that probably has happened with you that might frustrate you and it frustrated me and it got me angry and it got me upset. Somebody in front of me, a few rows in front of me, pulled out their phone, right? They pulled out their phone. This is like the ultimate taboo, no-no thing to do inside of a theater. He pulled out his phone and he just started playing on his phone and the setting of the screen was so bright and so big. I, I literally, I, I could not pay attention to the movie. It caught my attention. And it was like, I couldn't do, there was nothing that I could do to focus my attention on the thing I needed to focus my attention on because my attention was caught by the wrong thing. My attention was caught by something that was super bright in the middle of the theater. I wanted to start throwing my popcorn at him, but my wife helped me keep my sanity and keep my Christianity. You've probably been in that situation. And what's interesting about this world is I've noticed in the last couple of weeks where we've been struggling in this pandemic of the of the virus that's going around the world, I've just noticed that that it's easy for our attention to get caught on the on the wrong things. It's easy for me to get up and instead of, it used to be hard, but now it's even almost impossible for me to open my phone in the morning when I wake up and instead of going to my, my Bible app, instead of me going to God, I'm, I'm going to, to Fox News, I'm going to CNN, I'm going to these news outlets, I'm trying to find social media, what's going on in the world because I'm too concerned about all of the negative in the world right now. It's easy for me to get, get my attention dragged into the wrong things. It's easy for my, my, my attention to get dragged into the status of the virus, the status of our economy. Come on, I know you and, and I are feeling this right now, the status, what, what's going on with schools? Is my kid going to be in my house for another three weeks? Am I going to make it? Come on, like, or, or is, is, is my, what's going to happen with small businesses? Can I, am I going to get to go to some of my favorite places? Am I going to get to go, and am I going to even have my business? I'm worried about a lot of the wrong things, and when my attention is off on the wrong things, it can bring me into the wrong place. It got me thinking, though. It got me thinking about what, if, if, if I tend to get caught with the negative things, and my attention gets caught with the negative things, I wonder what catches God's attention. Like it caught me, it just, it just made me think. It was an odd question. I was like, I wonder if there's some things that, that catches God's attention. And what was interesting about when I read scripture, when I read the Bible, when Jesus was on this earth in his ministry time, there were some things that caught his attention. There's a story in, in, in Luke chapter 8 where there's an issue of a woman. It says there's an issue of a woman with blood. She was bleeding. And she'd been bleeding for years and years, and she had been bleeding and, and went to many doctors. She'd been to many professionals. She'd needed, she needed healing. And Jesus is walking through this crowd at one point, and something got inside of her where she couldn't handle it anymore. She couldn't, she couldn't focus. I bet she had focused on the wrong things for so long. 
She was trying to figure out what was wrong with her. She was trying to focus on where to go. She was trying to focus on all the things of this world. And I think there's something just got inside of her. And she ran up to Jesus, fought through the crowd. The Bible says that she touched the hem of his garment or the seat seat of the rabbi, which was, you know, part of his garment that, that if you were a rabbi, you wore this. It was part of his, 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 you know, his wardrobe. And she grabbed just the edge of his garment. And the Bible says that, that power came out of him, that he, it stopped Jesus in his tracks, that it caught his attention. That Jesus' attention was caught. He stopped in his tracks. He said, the power just left me. And, and he turned around and he saw this woman and he said, who touched me? And it was interesting. He, he was trying to figure out what, what just happened. And this was his response to, to, to the lady who highlighted herself that got healed. This was his response in Luke chapter 8. It's found in verse 48. And he said, then he said to her, daughter, your faith. Come on, if you're sitting there and you're watching our digital online experience, say faith. Your, your faith has healed you. Go in, go in peace. So the summary was is that she needed a miracle. She tried everything she knew. She needed a tangible miracle in her life. And she needed to catch the attention of Jesus the rabbi walking by her. And the Bible says that it was her faith that stopped and caught the attention of Jesus. When you read this story, what you, you have to ask yourself is, is, what miracle do you need right now? Is it healing? Maybe you're sitting there and you need healing. Whether it's the virus or not, maybe you are sick in some way inside of your body and you need a miracle. You've tried every professional, every uh, pharmaceutical drug, every uh, you, you, whether it's a, a natural remedy or, or, a, or a, a pres prescription. You've tried everything and you need healing. You need a miracle. Maybe it's something in your finances especially in our world today. Maybe you're going to need a miracle. You're praying, God, I don't know. Maybe there's an, uh, uh, an interruption in your employment. Maybe there's something wrong with your business. Maybe you're fearful about where the next paycheck is going to come from. You need a miracle. Maybe it's peace in your life and you're fearful. You go to bed afraid. You wake up afraid. You live your life afraid. Maybe there's something inside of you and you need a miracle. It could be something as simple as just making it while your kids are at home and not at school. Maybe you need a miracle. And if whatever miracle you need, the Bible shows us that the thing we're going to need to do is ask ourselves, where is our faith? Because if our faith catches the attention of God, we need to be, uh, we need to be aware of where our faith is. Is. We need to be aware of where our faith level is because faith catches the attention of God. So what is faith? Because I grew up in church. I, I, I've heard that word a lot if you go to church or you're a Christian. Faith is the, is the word we use. We always say that even. We're people of faith. And if you're not careful, if you don't know what that word means, you can think of what it is. Sometimes you know faith from your pastor. Sometimes you know faith from your church. Sometimes you know faith because of a book you read. Maybe there was a great statement you saw. You, you have all these definitions of faith, and it almost can be ethereal. You're like, it's just this I thing you can't really help and define. I'm going to help you understand understand, want to help us understand what faith really is. Hebrews chapter 11, if you have your scriptures, go ahead and open it up, but we're going to read it here. I want to read this to you. Hebrews gives us some great definition about faith. It says, faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. Now, we quote that a lot, but I want you to know Hebrews goes on to explain this idea of faith. So that's kind of like the definition of faith. They want to unpack it. Let's unpack it. It says, through their faith, now there is interesting, I'll go back to that in just a minute. Through their faith, the people in the days, in days of old, earned a good reputation. In verse 3, it says, 
By faith, we understand that the entire universe was formed at God's command. This is important. you got to understand that it goes on for several verses after that, highlighting men and women of great faith and what they did and what it was attached to. And it comes to the end of Hebrews, kind of the end part of this, this verse, this passage in Hebrews. And it says this in verse 13, all these people, these men and women of faith that were incredible, this called, it's almost like the hall of fame of faith. It says, all these people died still believing what God had promised them. Somebody say promised where you're sitting. That God had promised them something and they believed what God said was true. So for us in understanding really our idea of faith, we need to know this, that every, all biblical faith is attached to a promise of God. That faith is not hope. Faith is attached to this idea that if God said it, we can believe it. It's not, we're not hoping it happens. And I know sometimes we even misuse this. You know, I've heard somebody say, well, I'm not having, I'm having faith to win the lottery. Well, that's not exactly how it works. You have hope that you're going to win the lottery. You, you have hope, but God never said you were going to win the lottery. So you don't have faith to win the lot. What God is trying to tell us is that our faith, all biblical faith is attached to a promise of God. So if God said it, man, he can do it. God is who he said he was and God can do what he said he can do. That issue with the woman of blood, she had seen God walk around. He said, I'm a healer. Let me walk around and show you that I can heal. She said, man, God said it. God did it. I can walk into him and stand by faith that he can heal me. Why? Because God said it. God had a promise. All faith is attached to a, a promise. So as a most basic definition I can give you when it comes to faith, faith is simply this. Faith is agreement with God. That God said it. I can stand on it. He's who he said he was. He can do what he said he can do. And if he said it, I can take that to the bank. I'm going to stand in what God told me and said about my life. And I don't know if you know this or not, but this book, this Bible is full of promises from God. One day we're going to do a series on the promises of God because it's full of promises. There's full of things that God has spoke over us and spoke over our life. And we can access those by faith just like the woman with the issue of blood. So in the time we have left, in the next several weeks, as we unpack this series called Heroic Faith, I'm going to give you some characteristics of what I believe the number one hero of all time, all mankind and all of human history, Jesus. The reason we call it Heroic Faith, because this is Jesus-like faith. And we're going to give you, over the next several uh, weeks, char characteristics of, of his faith. That if we can activate these styles of faith and we can add this to our faith arsenal, we can unpack all the promises that God has for us. So today, as we, the time we have left, I'm going to give you one characteristic of faith today that Jesus had. We're going to highlight from this story while he was in his pressure moment. The first one is this today is called collective faith, collective faith. There's, there's a characteristic of collective faith that Jesus knew about and he actually went to his pressure, high pressure moment before he was going to go and, and be killed for you and for me. I want to read it for you in Luke chapter 22, verse 39. It says, and he came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, to his high pressure moment, and the disciples followed him. Now that's you and me. We're going through a high pressure moment. This is important for us to understand with our faith. And it says, and when he came to the place, he said to them, this is important. It says, he said to them, he didn't go alone. He's, he said to them, pray that you may not enter into temptation. I like what he says in Matthew chapter 26. This is a different part of scripture. Another gospel who tells of this moment. Remember, there's four uh, similar stories about the life of Jesus. And Matthew says it like this. I like it. It says, then he said to them, my soul is very sorrowful. I'm sad. I'm nervous. I'm in a pressure moment. I don't know what's going to happen. Even to death, remain here. I like this. And watch with me. That's a collective statement. That I'm going into something and I need you to be here with me. I want you to be here with me. He was giving us some insight that there's power in collective faith in our pressure moments. There's, there's power when you get around people who believe the way that you believe. There's even power when you get around people who don't believe the way that you believe. 
It comes in the positive and it comes in the negative. There's power when you get around this. Even Jesus experienced this. There's an interesting story in Matthew chapter 13 where Jesus is going around. He's in the middle of his ministry. He's walking around and he's healing people. He's doing miracle after miracle after miracle. And it's one of the most interesting parts of the scriptures that he gets to his hometown and people start to ask questions because they know who he is because they saw him grow up and they didn't believe by their statements. They didn't believe, they didn't think he was who everybody was saying he was. In fact, they were asking questions. You should go back and read it. They say, isn't this the carpenter's kid? Like we... This isn't that guy that was walking around doing, he can't do that. This is the carpenter's kid. You know, if we have a broken table, he can fix that. But how is he going to fix a broken leg? How is he going to fix a broken life? We don't believe he can do that. We, we, we just don't have the same faith. And the Bible says that because they had a collective lack of faith, this is so incredible. It says, and he did not do many miracles there because of their, their that's a collective's term. Their lack of faith. That they didn't believe who he said he was. They didn't believe that he could do what he said he can do. And it actually limited the, his, his miracle working power in his own hometown. That there was negative, there was power in the negative collective. But as we unfold that scripture... My, my concern for us, that this is not the season for us to be around negative people. This is not the season to be around people who, who don't believe and let people's negative faith come into your faith and make you not believe God is who he said he was. We, we're going to have to be careful. This ain't the season. We're, 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 we're playing high stakes games here. This is, this is not normal life. And we have to be careful because negative attracts the negative. So if you're around the negative person, is it, have you ever found that it's really easy when you're around a negative person for you to start being negative? We're going to have to be careful with who, who we choose to interact with. Even if you're online, one of the greatest uh, I would say suggestions that I could give you, maybe words of wisdom, maybe piece of advice. Be careful reading the comments in your posts. I've just noticed that it's a lot easier to see and write negative things. Things come up negative all the time. No one, have you ever wrote, noticed the news don't report positive a whole lot. And if you're not careful, you can get kind of sucked into seeing the negative and being around the negative and having the influence of the negative. That's why you got to be careful with your phone. Don't just open up every news art article. Don't just pick, you know, push every link. Don't follow every thread. The more negative you sow into your life, the more negative you're going to reap. So we got to be careful with with who we allow our faith to get around. Because I'm not, I'm just telling you, in a season like this, panic and worry is all over everyone. And if you're not careful, before you know it, you who might have walked around believing God can do anything, you might get around a bunch of people who don't believe that, and now you're Nazareth. Now you're the place where Jesus can't do many miracles. And it's not because he's not powerful. It's because his power and his promises are activated. We just saw it, are activated when we, we get around people of great faith. Now, there's power in the negative, but let me just tell you, there's power in the positive collective as well. When you get around people who believe the what you believe the same way you do, man, some miracle working things can happen. I'll dare to say that the Bible shows us that there's probably miracles that are not, have not happened in your life because you haven't got around the right people of faith. There's an incredible story in Mark chapter 2, which is another gospel if you if you don't know anything about the book of Mark. Mark chapter 2 does something interesting. It tells us a story of a paralyzed man of a man who, who was sick, who needed help, who needed a miracle. And what was interesting is by himself, he could not get to Jesus. 
He could not get to his miracle moment. So what's interesting is that the Bible says he didn't just have one person bring him, that the Bible says that he had multiple people, four people. I like this. Four people bring them to Jesus. I like, he says, some men came and bringing him to, uh, bringing to him a paralyzed man carried by, I like this, carried by four of them. Not one, not two, not three, four people who said, we got to get you to Jesus. You have a need. We're going to believe. We believe with you. Let me just tell you, if you don't believe Jesus is going to help and in that situation, you don't take your time. You don't spend your time. Come on. You don't spend your time just going, well, I guess we'll just take him to Jesus, see if that works. You don't spend your time carrying someone. He got around people who believed Jesus was, who he said he was, can do what he said he can do, and they broke open a a roof and lowered him down to Jesus. And in that moment, the man was healed. Now, the lesson that we need to learn when it comes to collective faith is simply this, is that if you are in need of a miracle, it might be the people that you surround yourself. Come on, God uses people. It might be the people that you surround yourself with that will get you to your miracle. There's a characteristic of Jesus-like faith. If he went into his pressure moment with somebody, with people who believed, you're going to have to walk into your pressure moment with somebody and people who believe. We're not going to get through this alone. We will get through it, but it won't be alone. Your miracle on the other side of this pandemic, of other side of this crazy situation, the other side of this virus, I'm telling you, your miracle moment's only going to come when you, come on, when you get around people who have like-minded faith. They got to believe like you. They got to speak life like you. They got to believe in the God that you believe in so that you can get to your, to your miracle moment. Now, interestingly enough, we got to know the how behind this. Because, you know, in this season right now, some of us are in quarantine. Some of us can't meet with other people. The government's asking us to keep in small numbers. And so you're like, well, pastor, I'd love to get around a lot of people, but I, it's kind of illegal right now. <laughs> and it's not illegal, but you know what I'm saying? It's kind of like, hey, it's kind of frowned upon when we get around one or two other people. Let me just tell you, there's multiple ways that you can stay connected and have collective faith. Number one is I'd be careful with your online digital connections. You need to first make them because some of us have turned ourselves into, you know, inter, ultra introverts and we've cut off the entire world. And now the only thing you've let in is negative. You need to make an online digital connection. That could be your first step. Some of you in here need to be able to be, be careful getting around the negative things. You need to get yourself around the positive things. Or you also, I'll say this, you need to make a actual connection. I know that's weird, but your phone can actually make phone calls. Instead of just searching the internet and sending a text. Now, again, some of you, a step could be sending a text. But I'm telling you, make a phone call. Especially to those who are maybe in the vulnerable areas of our, of our community and our, inside of our world right now. Maybe they can't get out. Maybe you're in one of the vulnerable uh, you know, categories of, of, of our world that, where they're saying, please don't leave your home. You need to reach out to them. There's probably somebody on your mind right now where you need to pick up the phone and make a phone call. Where you need to go out and actually reach out to someone. Send a text. Do something where you are actually getting connected. I would highly encourage you, maybe find a way to to see a face. Do a video call, whether that's on Google Duo or you're doing a FaceTime or you're getting online or you find some way to see someone's face. There's something about seeing someone's face in this season and getting around someone who you know is going to lift your spirits, who believe the way that you believe and, and believe in the God that you believe in. The second way, an easy way to do this is you, as I tell you to reach out and make a connection is to, is to meet or care for, for your neighbors. It's amazing to me how many of us don't actually know our neighbors or you don't actually know who lives next to you or live across the street or lives on your street. You know, we, we're, 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 we're obviously discouraged to go out into public places, but that doesn't mean you can't connect in a way with some people who live around you. Social distancing doesn't mean necessarily all kinds of physical distancing. We want to be careful with what we're doing, but I'm telling you, get connected to your neighbor. This is a great opportunity to find out who God placed in your life and around your home. And you actually find your steps and get around people who who believe the way that you believe. There's power in collective faith. If you and I are going to make it through this season... 
which I believe God's going to bring us through this season. I'm just telling you, your miracle moment is going to happen on the other side of you getting around people who believe God is who he said he was and can do what he said he can do. Where we can have people of faith where we just, God, you said it, we agree with you. We agree that you are bigger than everything in this world, including this virus, including the economy, including our world, including our government. God, you're ultimately in charge. And when we do that, I believe that we will see all of God's promises unfolded for us. Will you pray with me? Father, I just thank you, God, today. I thank you that right now you're speaking to us. You're giving us a message for our hearts. You're giving us such a time as this moment where today we can truly be connected to you. We could truly have faith in who you are, where maybe, God, we, we don't have to struggle understanding what the idea of faith is, but at its root, co- core, and really what it's attached to is your promises, and we agree with you, God. We believe in you. We believe you are who you said you are. We believe you can do what you said you could do. So, God, I pray for everybody watching or listening right now that, God, their faith is built in this moment, that we don't have to be afraid. We, we have to be, be faithful that we can believe, God, that you can get us past this moment. Father, I pray that we would not be uh, isolated, that we wouldn't isolate ourselves up, that we would be connected right now in Jesus. We would reach out to those who believe in you, who believe like us, where we can have a collective moment of faith, God. And I pray for every one of those people that are listening right now, every one of us who need a miracle moment. God, if if it's going to come on the other side of, of other people's faith, God, I pray that those right people would come into our lives right now. I pray that you you would, you would reach out those people into our lives and that we would accept it. We would hear the call of those faithful people so that we can get to our miracle moments. I pray all these things, God, in Jesus' name. Maybe you're right now with our heads bowed and our eyes closed all around the world through our digital church online experience. Maybe you're in here and you're watching, you're listening right now and you don't know Jesus. I want to give you an opportunity right now to give your lives to him. Uh, we, we don't want to make it weird in, in this moment. We can really make it simple for you. You can do it right there where you're sitting and we can have and create this moment so that you can walk with Jesus. It's, it's hard to have faith in Jesus if you don't believe he was the son of man. I want to give you the opportunity to give your life to him. So right there where you're sitting, I'd love for you to give your, your, uh, give you an opportunity to give your lives to him. Maybe you're a second kind of person. Maybe you've always loved God. Maybe you've always been to church and, but you know, as you look back on your life, as you're just evaluating your life, maybe you're, you're at home, you have more time to think about what your life has been like. You've walked away from him. Maybe you don't, you don't really, uh, you, you believe that you want to be a Christian, but you don't act like it. Maybe today is the day to rededicate your life so that you know in your heart, you're walking with him every day. So if you're one of those two people. If you need to give your life to Jesus for the very first time, or you need to rededicate your life, I want to give you this opportunity right now. And and I want to give you uh, the moment just right there where you're sitting, where you're listening to give your life to Jesus. I want to just do this on a count of three, just by the Holy Spirit. Will you just lift your hands on the count of three? One, two, three, and just lift your hand right now. Just saying today I'm, I'm giving my life to Jesus. And I want to pray with you if, if that's you and you had that moment. And if you did, will you just, will you let us know? You can text, uh, text us in that comment section uh, after this in just a moment. But I want to pray with you if you gave your life to Jesus or if you dedicated, you rededicated your life. I want to, I want to pray with you. We're going to pray and seal the deal right now, uh, even on this online experience. I love that we have technology that we can do that. So let's pray together. And we'll all say this together. Say this with me. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Change my life. I recognize now that I am a sinner and I need you. Help me, Lord, to live for you, to honor you, and to give you my all. It's from this day forward, that I will never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, we would love to connect with you. Text Jesus to the number there on screen, and we will send you some steps that you can take to be a fully devoted follower of Jesus. If you're joining us again for our first time, we would also love to connect with you. Go to our website, fill out a connect card, and we'll be in touch. Lastly, we have virtual groups going on, what we're calling Zoom groups. Connect with us by going to one of those groups and finding one that fits your schedule. Well, I want to bless you before we send you on your way today. So if you would, would you pray with me? May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his counts upon you and give you peace. 
In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. Have a great week.